I've got a confession to make in this video. Last year, I decided that I was going to sell my record and CD collection. I talked about how I'd had to sell my original collection when I'd lost my business in 1991 and had to find a way of bringing money in. That way was by buying a market stall and using my collection as stock because I didn't have the money to buy any other kind of stock. I talked about how I hated selling my collection and how sad it made me feel when I sold record after record. I recalled how, when my marriage ended in 2010, I'd left the records I had left from the market trading days and how a couple of years later my ex took them to the tip as she wanted them out of the house and I didn't have any room for them. I have to say here though, that she didn't just do it, I'd okayed it at the time. I then went on to share about how I'd started to rebuild my collection and how I didn't seem to have the attachment to it that I did with my old one and how it didn't feel the same. Here's how my head was thinking at the time. I'd stopped playing my records. In fact, I hadn't played any of them for ages. These days, I go for the convenience of playing my collection via MP3. In the 2000s, I'd started converting my collection to MP3s as I was thinking about DJing again and the thought of going back to lugging boxes of records in and out of my van in the rain and then carrying them in and out of venues, sometimes upstairs too, was the one thing that was putting me off doing it. I'd done that years before and I didn't fancy it again. But the thought of carrying a computer and a couple of hard drives seduced me. And so that was the way I decided to go. I started converting my CDs and records to MP3 and transferring them to my computer. I bought DJing software from a company in Australia that seemed as though it would do the job well. In fact, it was exceptionally good. And best of all, I could find any particular song by typing the title into a search and within a few seconds it would find it and I could be playing it. That was so much easier than going through all my records trying to find the song. It was so convenient that I started playing my music that way all the time. And when I started radio presenting in 2009, that too was playing from a computer, so my records and CDs took a back seat. In fact, the only time I played a record or a CD was when I first bought it to convert it to MP3 and to add it to my music collection in digital format. I've got to be honest, for years I'd heard people going on about how much better it is listening to records rather than files. And yet nobody thought it was inferior at parties and weddings and events that I DJ'd at. They thought the music was great and I knew it was because so often I'd look out in front of me to a packed dance floor. They couldn't care less what the format was, just that I was playing great music. That convenience has stayed with me, even since I stopped doing disco work in 2013 and radio work in 2017. The truth is I can find anything in my collection in seconds on my computer, and that's how I prefer to listen even if the sound isn't superior. The fact is, my ears aren't as good as they were after a lifetime of listening to music played on club-sized speakers. And so, when I decided I was going to sell my records and CDs, I talked myself into believing that my physical music didn't really mean anything to me anymore. My original collection did, and I still catch myself thinking about how great that collection used to be. It's true that I don't think of my current collection as being anywhere close to my original one. And yet here's what I found out since I went public that I was going to sell my music collection. I started procrastinating about putting them up for sale. I kept saying to myself, I'll put them up for sale in a couple of days when I got a bit more time. And then, in a couple of days, I'll tell myself that I'm too busy at the minute and I'll do it at the weekend. And on and on it's gone. 
I talked about why I was selling them in October 2023. It's now April 2024 and do you want to know how many I've sold? Not one. Even though I talked about how this collection meant nothing to me and how it was going to be a doddle to sell this one, I haven't been able to bring myself to parting with them. And so I have to face the truth that whilst in my head I can happily live without them, in my heart that's so much harder to do. Even though my collection today is nowhere near the quality of the one that I had all those years ago, I can't bring myself to part with them even though I haven't played any of them other than to film an insert for one of my videos. I'm still playing my music every day, but I love the convenience of playing from my computer and I haven't missed not playing a record or a CD. It's really weird that in conversation with people, I recall those memories of playing my records over the years. Watching the labels spinning around on the record player as a kid and being mesmerized by them. Of sitting and reading the liner notes on an LP when I was listening to it. Of flicking through my singles collection and looking at all those different record labels and the different sleeves that accompanied them. I talk about where I bought so many of my original collection. I talk about what shops I bought the record from, when I bought it, who I was with at the time. All those memories linger with me. In fact, without the music, I'm sure I wouldn't have a memory ever come back to me. The collection I have now doesn't have the same pull. I don't feel the same way I did about it at all. But in my heart, I still can't bring myself to part with it. After all that talk about how little it meant to me, how I would find it easy to part with and so on, I realized it was nothing but talk. It was just me being Billy Big Boots. And that's why I'm making this confession today. There's just something about my record and CD collection that won't allow me to part with it. And for all that bravado and bluster, I just can't do it. My connection with records and CDs is much stronger than I'd realized. Over the last few weeks, I've come to the realization that even though I don't play them anymore, I shan't be selling them anytime soon. And you know what? Even if I look like a bit of a fool for having made that video about selling them all, I'm okay with that. I suppose at the end of the day, my love affair with records and CDs isn't over after all. I was three when I bought my first record, I'm 63 now. After all these years, music is still my first love and parting with the real thing is proving too much for me. Still, to quote my favorite group of all time, I may change my mind again when I'm 64. If you've got any comments to make, feel free to do it down below. Especially if like me, you said you were gonna sell your record collection, but then didn't. And if you'd like to click up there, you can see that video where I said I was going to sell them all. I'll see you next time.